We are looking for a different shape of mindset, a different shift of energy. Um, that old energy needs to evaporate and really now we need to be all about people and heartfelt, purpose-driven business strategies that have got meaning. We've got to start looking to the future and this is the reason Silent Ego has come to life is because it says it in the, you know, the strap line, it's the uh, soul of the business and that soul is the whole obviously uh, but it starts with the, the leadership and the leadership team and it's about bringing people together and uh, you know, being um, uh, you know, to, to have more love in the work environment. Let's, let's use that word as a good, uh, a, a good settler. It's often not, you know, businesses now, and it comes back to leadership, will need to start to rethink about that human integrity and that, that, you know, bringing good people into this operation and giving them flexibility, whether it's, you know, contractual flexibility, whether it's time uh, flexibility. We talk about cyber time and cyber hours. You know, um, you know, the prophecy is we won't be working days anymore, we'll be working components of hours. Paul Stevenson, creator of Silent Ego and founder of EgoStream. Paul, what was the inspiration behind the font of knowledge, the transmission, Silent Ego? Well, um, it started about 25 years ago, actually. Um, obviously, EgoStream, the last two and a half decades of experience, uh, coupled with all the challenging times that we're actually in right now from, uh, you know, new world business environments, etc., lent me to think that um, there's a lot of what I would call dormant talent sitting in unknown leaders and uh, founders, CEOs, uh, innovators and entrepreneurs, um, uh, particularly in the technology industry. So 25 years ago, um, I kind of started my career as a, an active headhunter, um, running a business where I was actually um, fundamentally uh, working with business strategies, predominantly from the US into the UK European market, helping tech companies find a presence and hiring people. So obviously some great interviewing skills and techniques and insights and lots of stories with lots of household names, which... Uh, you know, once you get into a good old story, uh, ends up being uh, quite funny or quite dramatic. Um, so in some respects, it, it's part of uh, my personal uh, experiences with working with chief executives, managing directors, founders, entrepreneurs, etc., coupled with uh, venture capitalists, investors, PE houses, etc., etc. And I'm launching Silent Ego because there's been some very interesting patterns learnt on this journey over the last 25 years. Um, as we've been working in, you know, high ego environments and I'm here to sort of express that sort of insight, but equally offering a, a service which is going to hopefully encourage CEOs, founders and entrepreneurs to come forward to be interviewed um, in relation to two things. Uh, firstly, um, express their journey of where they are with their business or where they've been. So um, this is not all about the new modern leader, but it's also about sort of tapping into the font of knowledge in the the veterans and to create a community uh, we talk about the community a lot um today you know particularly with where we are and where we're going you know out with the ego in with the eco um so really it's that bridging process of uh, uh, transmission uh, to bring people to sit in the chair and to be asked some very interesting deep questions and i think what's in it for the uh, the entrepreneur and the business leader and the md it gives them a voice of expression that is comes to the heart of the issue, which is all about the soul of the business, uh, not necessarily about the spreadsheet, uh, but more about who that leader is, the way they think, and fundamentally the way they express themselves within their, their environment. So it's a heartfelt service. Um, it's really all about people, and it's bringing us all together and sharing the stories, uh, the tips, the the insights, the guidance, it's, it's just that font of knowledge that uh, I want to encourage people uh, to come forward with and uh, become part of the, the silent ego uh, drive. So it's really interesting, you just touched on, uh, just, in, just in that last little piece, you touched on the heart of the matter and the heart of leadership, and you also touched on 
the founders and the MDs and the CEOs expressing themselves. Are you seeing a change then in leadership styles or in leadership going forward? I am or I'm not, and, but it's a very powerful question. And I'd say it's very powerful because it, the, the power is, it's the energy of the old leadership style is evaporating very, very quickly. So unfortunately, you know, I have experienced over the years what I would call classic autocratic leadership, which is not a skill. Um, I think people now are beginning to join people. So what do I mean by that is, so the answer is um, the, 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 the new world leader needs to be, um, in some respects, thinking about being more heartfelt, uh, be more authentic uh, with who they are and how they actually express themselves within their business environment. And, you know, there's lots of lessons learned. So, just to be more specific, um, I think we've all come away from what I would call that heavily driven spreadsheet culture, where you know uh, it's been a sort of forced fed culture. I think now with culture shock and what's happened over the last number of months and the, the future of work and how that's changing, I think leaders now need to be thinking about adapting, uh, dare I say it, more feminine values, be more sort of open and a little bit more um, friendly in style, more empathetic, having more emotional intelligence, uh, being able to resonate with people because, it, to be honest, um, you know, businesses of the future will need to offer lifestyles. They, it's not just about a job. It's being able to offer opportunity. And it all comes back to the heart of the issue. The, the, sorry, heart of the heart of the business, which is the leader or the leadership team. And you know, this is the whole purpose and drive behind Silent Ego is bringing that message to a broad audience to say, hey, don't suffer in silence, release that ego and become more heartfelt. Um, so in, in, in reality, that, that's pretty much where it's going. So life beyond the spreadsheet. So using the spreadsheet as almost driving a different result than if you if you started looking at the human dynamics. That's right. I think that the spreadsheet has been the holy grail of business for quite a long time. It still is. Uh, it has a it has a big important part to play, but it's not everything. Okay. I think that we are looking for a different shape of mindset, a different shift of energy, and um, that old energy needs to evaporate. And really, now we need to be all about people and heartfelt, purpose driven business strategies that have got meaning. Um, and then we've got this overall collaboration of team call it that and it's not work for anymore a lot of business leaders talk about you know them as an example they use that word them and and, and who, who's us you know so you've got the leadership team and you've got them the employer it's not like that anymore it's all about us it's the big us and I think that is uh, incredibly important now unfortunately over the last number of years the spreadsheets took the center of that and if you think about it the the ram the you know the the the, the the accidents that that spreadsheet's actually caused and the, the ill health, the issues, the ego um, that populates that, that spreadsheet. Spreadsheet's there, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's important. But we are now talking about a new realm of leadership that um, needs to be more humanistic and more heartfelt in how they do what they do because people will join people. People don't join businesses anymore like they used to. And I think that's the that's one of the core messages uh, hopefully our listeners will resonate with today. Um, you have to be somebody and stand for something. Yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting. So for, for the founders, uh, the MDs, uh, CEOs, whatever title they have, wh where do they go? Because I guess if you're at the top, it's a, an interesting place. But you know what? One of the key observations I've made um, over the last uh, sort of the last 15 years, specifically at working with rescuing businesses and helping drive sales growth, particularly for, for uh, and working with some very smart, interesting um, innovators and founders, you know, founders and CEOs, you know, a classic founder is sort of somebody that's developed some technology and has got a wonderful idea and a vision, but has got limiting people's skills and finds people a sort of necessary evil. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. And I think that often founders are very lonely. I think I call it lonely founder stroke MD syndrome. Um, CEOs sometimes are very detached from the reality of people at what's going on because the you know, so for example, if they've just raised capital and they're, you know, they're, they're driven by the uh, the board in a sense that they've got, you know, 
private equity or you know it's a very numbers focused sort of thankless sort of environment that they've managed to be taken hostage in and that's another point that i'll make is one of the reasons why silent ego uh, has come about is because often what happens when uh, you're growing an organization and one of the questions i used to ask was who's running the company you or your ego and often it's actually the ego that's took over because it's all about the numbers numbers are important we're not going to run away from that. But what we're talking about is a new realm of leadership and the new ways that need to be coming in place with the environments that we're actually developing now. Um, so in essence, what I'm really trying to say is a lot of a lot of founders and a lot of CEOs are quite lonely. And sometimes they find it very difficult to actually transmit their heartfelt, you know, um, essence uh, because they get caught up in this big bad business world that sometimes doesn't necessarily bring the best out of leaders um so they're going to have to focus on that from from an individual perspective then if if people's mindsets are going to be about people joining people is there going to have to be a bit of a switch from their point of view definitely uh it you know it's exactly that it's you know leadership by default should be a wise you know you should be wise you should you should be offering wisdom and guidance and be experienced at, at what you're uh, what you're doing and how you actually engage and how you treat people. I call it a new energy, and I think the old energy served us well. Um, I think it's got us where we are today. But I think we've got to start looking to the future, and this is the reason Silent Egos come to life is because it says it in the you know the strap line. It's the uh, soul of the business, and that soul is the whole, obviously. Uh, but it starts with the the leadership and the leadership team, and it's about bringing people together and you know being um, uh, you know to, to have more love in the work environment. Let's let's use that word as a good uh, a, a good settler. It's often not you know it's it 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 doesn't exist in in a lot of environments. And you know we have come from this sort of mechanistic sort of spreadsheet driven culture, and I think you know it's uh, it has its place, but it's not centre now. I think the future is very different. So if we're all about moving forward and it's it, and the soul of the business is about everything encapsulated in that, are we going to have to relabel things like the workforce? Is there, is there going to have to be new terminology for that going uh, forward? It, it, it's a fantastic point. I mean, the, yes, without question. It's not the workforce anymore. It says it, doesn't it? Workforce. It sounds hard, doesn't it? It sounds like it's this hard work. It's life force. You know, it's it, you know, if you look at it, the, the heart of the the soul of the business, the leader and the leadership team, um, you know, adapting style and then bringing in the life force to actually engage the market. And, you know, this ripples right through the whole system, you know, customers, customer engagement. It's it's not being soft. You know, it's about being, you know, it's about being engaging. It's about, you know, being the the, the, the center of everything, but equally it's about bringing people together and, and, and adapting that life force style and being that central sort of energy point that people draw down on. And, and you know, as we as we come forward and you and I have discussed this, obviously, you know, in, in run up to today's uh, conversation, um, that the, the new world of work, it will be the employer and the employee in different in a different guise. So the employee will be will be interviewing, as an example, through intelligent questioning, the leader of the business. Yeah, of what the values are, what the purpose, what the mission is. We're not the first to say that, you know, but at the same time, this whole sort of shift is coming quick and people are going to need to feel energized by the environment. So what am I really trying to say? People join people. That's what I'm really trying to say. The business, yeah, the name, the product, the market, it serves in the right appropriate way, but at the same time, it's all about people to people. It's never been any different, by the way, but we're just becoming now more conscious, if I can use that word, in a spiritual realm, hence the soul. We're becoming more conscious that we need to be more humanistic about how we lead our businesses and how we sort of build our businesses. And and. I think uh, an analogy may be able to be drawn from things like the sporting fraternity. If we look at where professional sports been over the decades and how that's evolved, do you feel like business has been, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use the word left behind, do, do you feel like it's evolved at the same pace? So if we look at professional sport and, you know, 
you know, gone are the days, if you like, of the drinking culture within professional football, um, and that's yeah. evolved in nutrition. And if you look at the teams now that surround those people, do you feel like business is now playing catch up in that space? I, I think so. I think that, you know, obviously there's, you know, in the corporate world, in the, you know, the, the mega company world, I think there's a lot of shifts over the last five, 10 years of, you know, we have to have the codes of care for our workers. But, you know, it's very difficult for those businesses to truly administer that in a real heartfelt way. Why? Because they're listed businesses, most of them. So they're serving the stock market, which is the greedy monster, right? Um, and, you know, these codes of care without question, I call it the James Hunt. You know, if you look at where, you know, professional sport is today, the likes of Ronaldo and, you know, the like elite athletes, in the way they look after themselves and they get looked after. I mean, I'm not saying it goes, you know, as deep as that, but equally, I think from a leadership perspective, it goes, you know, a high performing company is a fit and healthy company. And I think that comes into it. And I think that you have to lead with examples. So, you know, as a, as a business leader, you know, having those sort of rituals, routines, and that kind of magnetism about, we're, you know, we're a healthy company as, as a, um, as one of our guiding principles of business is very, very important. And I think there is a big shift, um, one in action and on its way, uh, because it's, it's, it's healthy. And if you look at, you know, so for example, if you look at things like mental health, um, m major challenges there, unfortunately. And unfortunately, I've had the experience of working with a number of people who have suffered significant mental health issues because the environment that they were actually operating in was very, you know, uh, repressive and actually it took their souls hostage. Um, and it, what's bizarre about these sort of situations is the leader doesn't really want that. Um, you know, they just get caught up in the, the overall and they come back to this sort of point is who's running the company, you or your ego. And most, um, you know, when you really peel it all back, most leaders are really nice people. They really have a big heart, but just get caught up in the spreadsheet and leave the people behind. And it all becomes one big rush to drive results. And dare I say it, that most people don't want. You know, how mad is that? So the principles of elite sport, uh, for me, do come into it. Um, and I think it's it comes into it in a way that if you look at motor racing sort of 25 years ago to where it is right now, that precision sort of code that they use for everything um, is uh, is highly valid. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a human that drives that car to drive that result. So is it about maybe even down to how we administer the day uh, at work or at home as it as it's slowly becoming? Yeah, I mean, I think that more and more leaders are going to be faced with obviously um, it, what we term culture shock, where most people are going to be working, you know, from home or in remote locations. And I think the style of leadership will need to adapt to sort of keep people on track and encourage people to perform uh, at the highest level. And I don't think it's about slaving the hours anymore. Let's let's talk about that. I mean, we coined the phrase cyber time. Uh, it's about getting things done in order uh, to achieve the objective, uh, if we can use that language, uh, but equally not at any price. Um, I think, you know, we we use the term born to create and, you know, cr you know, create flow within our the working environment that comes back to, you know, energy and how we utilize our energy uh, in the most efficient ways. But equally be beneath that is is how we actually need to prepare ourselves uh, for the working world going forward. And I think, you know, businesses now and it comes back to leadership will need to start to rethink about that human integrity and that, that, you know, bringing good people into this operation and giving them flexibility, whether it's, you know, contractual flexibility, whether it's time uh, flexibility, we talk about cyber time and cyber hours, you know, um, you know, the prophecy is we won't be working days anymore, we'll be working components of hours. Uh, so all of this is coming and it's all coming quick, pr pretty quick. And I think leadership styles will need to adapt to, you know, be able to attract the um, the life force into their operations to be able to go forward. But Silent Eagle stands for these things. It's it's new world. It's the soul of the issue. It's not the, you know, the stuff that we've all been, dare I say it, paid to be positive. Um, those days are over. So the, so the Silent Ego transmission is, is, is really going to be a wealth of powerful uh, knowledge and the voice of reason that I guess as a founder or a CEO, 
potentially even you know down to the the investor community the venture mm. capital community can all can all pull from definitely i think the uh you know the rock star vcs the days are numbered yeah i think you have to take a more empathetic approach to um it, you know investing in businesses now it's not just about spreadsheets it's about the humanistic values of what they're investing into and being patient for the right shaped results um that's important i think uh, leadership now needs to adapt a more sort of, dare I say this, a more feministic sort of approach to nurturing teams and um, bringing people together to deliver um, great output. But more importantly, be, be beyond point with meaning that you're standing for something and, you, you know, you, you're creating the greater good. I think these are the times that we're actually um, we're challenged with. And I think equally, uh, the, the, the bizarre thing about this, I think this is quite natural. I don't think there's any rocket science to any of this. I think this sits in all of us. Uh, but I think we now need to sort of step up and, you know, come forward and say, well, you know, um, I'm, I'm just, you know, a natural leader and I am what I am. And this is who we are. And, you know, putting that code of love within the structure and, and the likes is, is very important, whether you're an investor, an entrepreneur or or whatever. It's not about the old capitalistic values. This is about life capitalism. This is the, we're on the precipice of the revolution of life. And I think it starts with the, the world of work and the environments we're creating. So yes, there is accountability without question. Um, and, you know, once again, it comes back to, it's all about the soul. Um, and we've all got it. We just need to access it. And for anyone who's listening at the, at, at this point in time, who do you want to talk to and what would you say to somebody who says you know i've never i've never sat and had a uh and done a podcast or a transmission you know you know and what would you well, say well, to them well let's let's use some good old-fashioned language here what's in it for them right well i tell you what's in it for them it's it's about basically firstly a good leader makes himself vulnerable so come and sit in the chair and um, i'm going to ask some very powerful questions that are going to be you know um I'm sure going to be well answered, uh, but equally it's about, you know, it's not about the business brand here, right? It's about the individual, but bear in mind what we've just been talking about. You know, the business brand, yes, it will have, you know, the website will say all of these things, um, you know, your services, your, your, you know, your market, you know, you've got all of those things right. This is about the individual. This is about the, the chief executive, the founder or the entrepreneur coming and talking about what they stand for, what they're about, you know, talking, you know, talking about the stories of experience, if you're a veteran, you know, big question would be, if you had your time again, what would you do different? I guarantee some of the subject matter that we've just touched on will be will be in there somewhere. Um, to the entrepreneur, what have you got in mind? You know, what's coming? Um, I think this is going to be quite exciting. But the, the distribution of this is obviously going to be global. So it's going to be good for promoting their brand uh, as an individual with that heart-centered outlook. And, you know, I think if we can bring this together, they, then by, by default, they're, they're, you know, they're getting the visibility that they require, but authentic. This is not about, you know, just coming here to talk about how good and brilliant you are. It's not about that. It's about, you know, what you stand for. It's purpose. You know, if we look at purpose, passion, profit, that's what we're all about. Yeah. Uh, but not profit at any price, which is what we've just come from. You know, the last 50 years plus has been a hard grind. It's served as well, but it's not going to serve us for the future, which comes back to if we keep doing what we're doing, we're not going to get where we need to be. And we all know that we're on the precipice of uh, new and it's going to start with, you know, bringing good leadership capability into in the office with real humanistic values. And that's what, uh, you know, we stand for. And that's what to... Uh, to expect so if you if you're a big ego looking to be transitioned more than happy to talk uh, but equally if you've got something really cool that you want to talk about as regards you know where you're going with your business likewise you know get let's let's communicate and let's make it happen excellent and for the leaders that are out there at the moment um how should they get in touch i think the, the best thing to do is check us out on egostream.com um on transmissions page uh, which is where silent Hugo sits uh, this is a launch we've got some very interesting guests coming up in september and i'd really like you to reach out to us and let's start a conversation mm -hmm.